Hi, it's Larry Cooper with the Experience University. I wanted to invite you to join us on Wednesday for one of our recorded webinars with the instructor Bruce Deloche. Bruce is an outstanding instructor, especially for using tools and hands-on uh, opportunities to teach from. We are doing a session specifically on water damage restoration about how to start the job, how to do readings, how to use all the different tools so that you can actually record and have a great record of what happened on the job site. When do you start the job? What are all the readings? Making sure that you're following the protocol standard of care and then the job. When do you know the job is actually done? Those are all critical things to look at. Bruce does a great job and take a look at this five minute clip that's gonna follow so you can see what a great opportunity it is to continue your education and bring your team in to learn more about water damage restoration. But here's Bruce. Using a hammer probe brings some discomfort um, because people say, well, I'm gonna be making holes in my customer's floor why can't I use my non-penetrating moisture meter? So let me show you why you have to be careful with that. I'm gonna put this on pinless, so it's a different setting. And by the way, I'm not picking on this meter or any other meter. This is just a limitation of non-penetrating moisture meters. I'm gonna set that, cover up these pins so I don't stab myself, but I'm gonna set this on, uh, on pinless or non-penetrating moisture meter. And uh, then I always test it. I put my hand against it so I get a quick test and it's reading. It should read 999. Now, what I'm gonna do next, will show you the limitations of the meter. I am going to put my hand one half inch away from that meter. It's reading 68. It doesn't even know that there is a dense, <laughs> wet material within a half an inch of it, okay? So that's about a half inch distance there. Let's see how close I have to get before it reads wet. All right, so that's about an eighth of an inch away. And it's it took me touching it with my hand to get it above reading at risk. So the point I'm trying to make is there are limitations to this meter, limitations to all non-penetrating moisture meters. Now, speaking of non-penetrating, let me point some, one more thing out and then we have to move on to other types of equipment. Uh, but speaking of non-penetrating moisture meters, if you're taking readings in concrete or block or brick or stone, make sure that you're using a meter that is designed for that. Uh, this particular meter, if you look at the back of it, it's got some spring-loaded pins, okay? So it can take resistance readings. And then if you look here, it also has these uh, these two pads. So it sends out a radio frequency signal and it uses two methods to try to determine how wet a concrete slab or similar material might be. Okay, so it's actually designed and calibrated for concrete. So get the right kind of meter and you'll get much better readings. Another part of your, uh, your documentation process is to document the conditions that existed when you arrived. And so we have our, this is a thermal hygrometer, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this probably later, uh, but one thing I wanna point out about uh, thermal hygrometers, you have to understand the meter. You have to understand how this meter works, um, what its you know active temperature range is, in other words, how does it uh, remain um, accurate? So how far can it go on the high temperature and the lower temperatures and still remain fairly accurate? This one, a uh, very nice meter. A lot of you have probably heard of uh, Visala. This one is uh, uh, also privately uh, branded uh, for Phoenix. But anyway, this meter, wish you could see that, but it's kind of uh, too, too whited out. Uh, but uh, this meter will give you the uh, temperature relative humidity Humidity ratio and grains per pound, vapor pressure. It'll also help you to understand the dew point temperature. We're not gonna get into psychrometry today, but do understand that when you are doing your documentation and you're uh, you know, uh, 
trying to justify the equipment that you place, why you left it there as long as you did, this is a big part of it. Is that dehumidifier even working? We're gonna talk about how to take readings on dehumidifiers in a little while. But anyway, there are five basic areas or five basic readings that you should get. You should get your temperature and relative humidity outdoors, your temperature and relative humidity in your affected area, temperature and relative humidity in any unaffected areas of that same building. You should also get temperature and relative humidity readings of the HVAC output and your dehumidifier output if it's up and running. Any other specialty equipment that you have set up, you should also get readings on that. So if you've got portable heat, portable air conditioning, make sure you get the output readings on that. Hey Bruce, yeah. I have a quick question for you. How accurate yeah. are these meters and do you need to use the same meter on this job until completion? Because I know that I had multiple meters and sometimes when I put them side by side, they didn't get the same readings. What What is your thought? Absolutely positive? true. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. And I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, in fact, that's one of the big things that we teach in uh, water damage restoration is to make sure that you have the same meter, not the same model of meter, the exact same individual meter. Uh, and, and it's a good idea to also document the serial number of that meter so that you can show anyone who questions your readings later on that you were consistent with that. Now it's far more important, this is my opinion, Larry, it isn't necessarily um, you know, something that I have scientific evidence on, but it's far more important in, in my opinion to make sure that you are consistently using the same moisture meter when you're taking your moisture readings in materials. Um, your thermal hygrometer, uh, not as critical that it be the same thermal hygrometer, but in my opinion, hey, use the same one every time, you're gonna get a lot more consistent uh, results that make sense. The other issue, now that you bring it up, about meters and how accurate they are, one of the problems that we have in our industry and it's kind of like a 